Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. In, I'm Nilesh and in this video, we'll continue to learn about scikit-learn pre-processing. And in specifically, we'll look at min-max scalar and max apps scalar in this video and try to understand what these two functions do. So the min-max scalar tries to uh, bring the data into range zero to one and the max app scalar tries to bring the data between the ranges minus one to one. And before we get into uh, the actual scaling part of it, I just want to uh, put this slide to emphasize that it's important that in most of the cases, you usually want to uh, have your data split into train, test, validation, and test. And then you want to fit the scaling uh, methods only on the fit only on the train data set to get the parameters and then use those to transform all the three train validation and test sets so that's important to get a final version of your scaled train validation and test sets so in this video we are looking at uh, what is scaling range in previous video we looked at standardization uh, where we subtracted the mean and divided by standard deviation. In this case, we are going to subtract the minimum value and divide by the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value to uh, get us the values that are in range from zero to one. And after that, let's say if we were to change the scale, uh, for example, instead of zero to one, if we wanted the scale to be from 100 to 200, then what we would do is scale it. And for scaling, we would use this method where we have the new max, which would be 200, a new min would be 100, and then plus new min. And this is the x value that we get from the standardized that's up above. And that's how we'll get the scaled value. And we'll look at a couple of examples in next few slides. So this is the first example where we have uh, this two by two matrix right here. And to apply this formula that we saw earlier, what we want to do first is subtract the minimum value from each of these elements. So the minimum value in the first column is one. So we are subtracting one from one, so we get a zero. Then we subtract uh, three minus one and we get two and so on for the second column. Uh, likewise, for the denominator part, we need to subtract, get the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value uh, from column wise. So from here we have, this is three minus one, so we have two, and then we have four minus two, which is two, so these two values. After we have calculated these two, then we need to divide this matrix right here by these values. So if we divide uh, zero by two, then we have is zero here, and then two by two, if we have the one. And similarly, for the second column, we divide by two and we get these values. So as you can see, we have now, uh, we now have the data that is in the range from zero to one. And that's what the min-max scalar does. Additionally, we can add a new scale, convert it to a new scale and to, let's say we need a scale that goes from 100 to 200 instead of zero to one. Then what I would do is here in this formula, add 200 minus, we have 100 here, plus 100. And then multiply this by this particular uh, matrix that we had earlier, uh, which was right here. So we have this matrix right here. And the output that we get is this matrix. So in this particular matrix, we now have the minimum value is 100, maximum value is 200. So that's how the min-max scalar works. And we'll look at the implementation of that in a few seconds. Uh, before doing that, let's move on and look at what is max app scalar and how it works. So in this case, we have again this two by two matrix. 
the only difference is that now we have negative values in added in here so we have two negative values in each of the one value in each of those two columns so the process here is we need to get the maximum value from each of the columns in a way that uh, first we take the absolute of these so for example in this case what we want to do first is take absolute value of minus 100 minus 200 3 and 4 so when we take the absolute what we get is 100 so all values become positive and once we have that then we are going to get a max of that and so the maximum value is 100 in column 1 uh, right here and then we have this column 2 where we have 200 as the maximum value and that's exactly what we have right here once we have the maximum values then we can go ahead and divide each of the values individual values within the matrix x by the maximum value so we are dividing minus 100 by 100 and 3 by 100 and thus we get these values right here similarly we repeat the process for the second column and we get these values so uh, thus in the output the uh, range that we can get in max app scalar is between minus 1 and 1 so here we see that the lowest we have is minus 1 so that was how we can that was the intuition behind the min max scalar and max app scalar now let's get into jupyter notebook and see how we can implement these here in jupyter notebook i've imported uh, two libraries numpy and sklearn also the pre-processing module from sklearn and they, these are the versions that i'm using for uh, this particular video now first item that we'll look at is the min max scalar min max scalar and for this we'll go ahead and create data uh, for train and test so x underscore train we'll create a simple 2 by 2 array and let's have the value same as what we had in the slides earlier so 1 2 and then 3 and 4 so that's our uh, train data now for test data let's try create a similar array and we'll keep the values in similar range so let's say 1 and 3 and 4 and 2. The reason for that is because when we are going to uh, do the fit, it would be on the train set. And then we are going to use values from those train set to apply them for transforming the test data. So here the first method. So there are two methods. The first one we'll try is we'll create a scalar object. Uh, using the pre-processing dot min max scalar dot fit x underscore train so that's uh, the object we are creating and here we can print uh, the minimum and maximum values it finds from uh, the train data so to do that we would type scalar dot data underscore mean and then we also can get the maximum value so print scalar dot data underscore max underscore so this uh, as we uh, can see here the minimum value in column one for train is one and for column two it's two and that's what we get here and then the maximum values are three and four and those we see right here Moving on, we can now apply this scalar that we created to our data set. So we'll store the output in a variable x train underscore x underscore train underscore scaled and we'll apply the scalar dot transform and in here we can type x underscore train. So now if we go ahead and print this x underscore train underscore scaled uh, we can see that this is the scaled version 
of the original train matrix that we had which was 1 2 3 4 now it is 0 and 1 moving on we can now apply the the same scalar to the test data set and the method is same so x underscore test underscore scaled so we'll store the values in this variable so we'll type scalar dot transform dot uh, transform x underscore test and then we can go ahead and print this so x underscore test underscore scaled and as you can see the scaled version of the original matrix 1342 is now 0 0 0.5 1 1.5 and 0 so these were uh, this was one way we could do it there is also a simple uh, method that is also provided in scikit-learn another another method and where we do not have to create use the fit and transform we can simply write preprocessing dot min max underscore scale and here we can go ahead and provide the train in this case and this will go ahead and calculate the converted values so we have zero zero one one uh, same as what we had earlier so that's how the min max scalar works now let's look at how the max abs scalar can be implemented. So max abs scalar. For this, we'll again create a new data set. X train is equal to NP dot array. And this again is going to be same as what we had in the slides, minus 100. And then minus 200 we have two negative values just to show how the uh, the importance of using absolute in uh, the process of conversion here so if we go ahead and print this we get and this is the train set and then we can similarly create a test set x test is equal to np dot array and here we have let's say minus 90 minus 150 and we have 4 and 3 so if we print this x test this is the array we have and the syntax is similar to what we had earlier so for the first method it would be scalar is equal to pre processing dot max abs scalar so capital m capital a capital s open close parenthesis then dot fit x underscore train now again here we can uh, check the values in here so the value we can look at is the maximum value as that's what we are interested in so the maximum absolute value and scalar so as you can see if we take absolute of this array uh, 100 is the maximum value in column 1 and then 200 is the maximum value in column 2 and that's exactly what we have here. We can now use this scalar to transform the train set. So we'll save that in x underscore train underscore scale is equal to scalar dot transform transform and within this we'll have x underscore train now we can print this so x underscore train underscore scaled so that's our transform data set using the max apps scalar and we can do the same operation on the test set so let's do that now so for test we'll use x underscore x underscore test underscore scaled is equal to scalar scalar dot transform x underscore test and then we can go ahead and print this x underscore test underscore scale and as you can see we have the transform matrix so earlier we had minus 90 and 4 now we have minus 0 0.9 and 0 0.4 so 
the lowest value that we can go in this particular method is minus one and the highest value would be one so we are within those ranges in both these cases again uh, as before there is a simple way to do this as well which is preprocessing dot max apps underscore scale and here you can specify the data set so x underscore train and we get the same output as before minus one minus one point oh three point oh three and that's exactly what we had earlier so that was it for this video i hope in this video you got an intuition about how to use the min max scalar and how to use the max apps scalar and if you have a question as to when you want to use this it depends on the data set i'll create a separate video on that but in general if you know that the maximum values or the and the minimum values of your train and test uh, sets are within reach then this could be one way you could kind of scale your data set your features in your data see you in the next video Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.